All right, guys. Um, it is December 16th, I believe, and um, just another crazy snowy day in Minnesota. Just won't stop snowing here. We got like 20 inches over the weekend, and now we've got about another five this morning so far. So pretty crazy, and um, I'm just driving home from work, so I thought I'd talk about um, pull-ups and how to test your one rep max. Honestly, it seems like the, the most frequently asked question about GST is how to test your max for pull-ups and how to implement them into the core lift. Um, so when you're, when you're going to approach uh, your one rep max test for pull-ups, you're going to need a few things most likely, okay? Uh, you're going to need yourself, you're going to need a pull-up bar, and you're going to need um, either some dumbbells or a dip belt and some weight plates. Because what you want to do is you just want to keep hitting sets um, until you find that weight that you can hit around four to six reps with. Um, you know, good reps, good form reps, you don't want to overestimate or cheat yourself. And so you just want to keep adding weight through, um, like putting a dumbbell behind your knee works really well, and then just bending your leg. That actually works really slick, or uh, obviously the dip belt hanging weight plates um, works really well too. So you just keep adding weight in, in five to 10 pound increments um, until you find that, that added weight that allows you to do four to six reps with good form. And then you're gonna take your total body weight and you're gonna add the amount of weight that, that you added. It might be you know, 20, 30 pounds extra. So body weight plus that additional weight. Um, just get the sum of those two numbers, plug that into the one rep max calculator. And, and from there on, you, know, you, just, you just find your one rep max and then you plug that into your 60, 70, 80, 90, you know, like whatever your chosen core rep, um, core rep set uh, intensity scheme is. And then you get those numbers. Now, one thing that's probably going to happen if, if you're not extremely strong on your pull-ups, um, when you go, you know, 60, 65, or 70 percent, you might find a number that's under your body weight. In that case, um, you can check out my tutorial on resistance band pull-ups, if your gym has those or if you uh, have those available. Or if your gym has the assisted pull-up machine, uh, you can use that too. So you, you know, so you take weight away from your body and, that, and that's how you reach that, that goal pound number that's under your body weight for micros. Usually it's going to be like micros one and two. Um, so, if, so if the program calls for a weight that's under your body weight, you use the resistance band, you use the assisted pull-up machine, or you can go with the method where you put a bench under the pull-up bar and you just kind of help yourself with, uh, like with one leg. And it's not going to be exact, but you know, it's going to be better than just trying to use your body weight and just trying to get as many as you can. Now, if you can't do a pull-up, just in general, you know, just one regular body weight pull-up or chin-up or multi-grip pull-up, then what I advise you to do um, is, is just to start trying to hit as many reps as possible in all three sets of your, of your core lift and just do that on every micro cycle. Um, you know, you might have to start out with some help and then just, you know, progress to one body weight pull-up. Sooner or later, then you're going to start hitting two, three, four, and just, just keep doing that. Just keep doing those AMRAP sets until you build up to around like 10 or 12 pull-ups. And then you can uh, go into the one rep max test, and it's going to be a lot more accurate for you. It's just it's just going to work a lot better because you don't you don't really need to do the one rep max test if you're if you're unable to do one pull up. Then you just start with the three sets, as many reps as possible until you're hitting like 10 to 12 body weight pull ups. Um, and so that's and that's about it. That's basically like the sum of how to how to estimate your one rep max for pull ups. Uh, when you're using pull-ups as a core lift with GSD. And then that's also how you can use uh, a sub body weight, weight in micros one and two, which is typically the case. That happens pretty often. And I see a lot of questions about that. So I just wanted to talk about that. Um, just want to remind you guys, uh, if you haven't tried GSD yet, you can learn about it at www.growthstimulustraining.com. That's the new domain for the, uh, for the program, and I'm just adding these video blogs and more and more testimonials all the time. I want to keep getting new and, uh, you know, newer content on there and just keep building up the site and making it basically just a one-stop shop 
um, you go to that site and you'll be all taken care of. So that's what I've got going on right now, and I'm going to sign off because i got to concentrate on the road. It's, it's pretty bad out here. So I will talk to you guys next time. See ya.